What's up? It's drunk. Built some solar some time ago. Basic bifacial modules. Each module is about 410 watts each. I got two strings. Let's see, there's your little disconnects. String one, string two. So I have basically an east and west string. You know, work out a little extra performance in the morning or the evening, depending on the angle. But as you can see, this whole area here is pretty open. Slow growth trees. Basic wood racking and to any newcomers, uh, just use six inch mini rail. Get the job done. Let's see, mid clamp and clamp and clamp. I'm proud of this. The mounting system for this, not including labor, of course, eh, ran about, at the time, about 1500 bucks. The mini rails are pretty cheap and lumber is pretty cheap. I'm up in Petoskey, so I bought most of the wood in Flint because it's cheaper there. And then the pipe's buried in the ground and runs all the way to this yurt. Call this little thing in the outhouse. You know, I have to get the keys to open it up, but there's all the connections. And I wired it that they could connect to the grid, but the grid one's not being used. And here, just got a simple cord for a generator. And this is the main load center that feeds the house, or yurt, actually, so, but. Let's open her up. Hmm. 100%. I love this touch screen on the. Oh, there it is. Let's see right there. Oh, yeah, 100%. Of course, uh, the client's not here right now, designing another add on, but. So you can see uh, the entire roof has been engineered with vents, and I put a lot of screens to keep the bugs from getting in. And I got one of these old Econo fans. These things are trust, tried, tied and tr trust. Ugh very uh tried and true <laughs> very very good fan and they're controlled by these um controller ones for cooling ones for heat and i mean it gave it like a 10 degree dead band or uh, no more than that actually so if it drops below 33 degrees it'll turn this little 300 watt space heater on in here just to warm up this cabinet and it's super well insulated so keep this inverter from getting too cold which will discourage dew formation, right? Um, but the cool thing is, usually the inverter is going to kick out heat anyway, so this thing very rarely, if ever, will run. And usually if it's that cold, it's probably dry as a bone out. So it, but it guarantees that the battery is always brought up to state of charge. This thing has internal heaters on the cells, but I like the idea of it living in a heated area, like a house. And these things are loud as hell, so that's why I didn't want to put it, any of this equipment inside the yurt, you know, because it's one whole room. So that would drive you insane. But the trick is you got to put a lot of ventilation on this. So this discharges through a, uh, there's a dampener. It's a spring-loaded dampener. I believe it's located up here. 
Yeah, so located up here and this tube goes to here. It's very simple. So you don't have any cold backdraft coming in. It just opens and closes. Same as back here. I don't know if we'll be able to see. Ah, there it is. I put a small booster fan. That one is less powerful than the one that pulls. So the vacuum's higher. But this kind of helps overdo. And buried in there is another spring-loaded dampener. And during pollen season, you can stick this filter in here. So if there's a lot of high particulate, fine particulate, I told my client, like, during those times of the year, stick this in and it'll, it'll uh, ventilate. Cool thing is, it's usually not super hot. And you can see how this closes around the, the vent. Let's see? So I tried to solve a lot of problems now, like how, you know, how to put this thing in and not choke it, too. And it's also where it's pulling air, like the exhaust of the inverter's right here. So it kicks here and it sucks right out. You know, the intake is right here, and you can see that's the air intake comes straight up here, and it travels up like a like an invisible pipe, and it's able to feed. The heater, luckily, it's I want it right here because I don't want anything in front of it. But it'll it it'll it seems to work great. This thing has survived a harsh Michigan winter. Actually, that ice storm that hit up here in, in the Petoskey area, it this this thing had power when everybody else didn't. Just use the roofing vent. There's the air intake. Put some midnight solar surge arresters. And I think that this GFI of all things is not working. Yeah, get him a new GFI. But, you know, splice box, you can see the pipes. The strings go all the way out to the solar array. Uh, sandy soil here required a lot of grounding. So there's actually a ground rod there. There, there, and there. I put four ground rods in a line about oh, plus 10 feet apart to ground this thing. You know, so this, the, the grid connection here, this is for any of you electricians that want to know. So I'm not using this. This is just a, a placeholder, maybe for a secondary inverter or something else, secondary generator, who knows. But that'll take, that's the grid input, which isn't being used. But I brought the ground wire into this part and I did the bond here. Even though you could do the bond in the inverter, I chose to treat this thing as if the grid was there. And I put the electrical bond right there. I could have, I could have bonded it on the bus in the inside. I could do the internal one that the inverter has, but I chose it to do that way. So screw you if you disagree. <laughs> but it works. And, uh. And this uh, inverter package was on sale from Signature, so pretty good deal. But, like, it didn't cost a lot to build this thing. And, you know, I did it all in metal. Metal and pressure-treated wood with a coat of stain on it. And I figured it should hold up for the long haul. But, you know, it's a system I built for a client about... I don't know, it's been out here, I believe, two years, and it really, to be honest with you, doesn't look any different than the day I put it in, so. And it's keeping the bugs out reasonably well, too, I'm surprised. But look at that. Gorgeous. And uh, one other thing, you know, my, my client, he, uh, you know, he was originally running... You know, there's this, here's this propane tank. And then over here, that's where his generator used to be underneath that like fake rock thing. And he was actually running this, that generator 24 hours to power this thing. And now, you know, with this, he doesn't even use the generator at all, but he got a backup generator. That's an inverter based one for cheap, about around a thousand dollars. And that's why we got this extra cord here. Because if he's up here hunting, it is upper Michigan, and Michigan weather is Michigan weather. And if it's gray skies and like, you know, if it's just abysmal, abysmal solar harvest, he, you know, he could have done two things. One, add an extra battery pack and put it on the back, one of the exterior outdoor rated ones, and couple it into that, double the capacity, or get a generator. And I actually said get a generator. Um, I also think he should get another battery because why not? You know, you can put a heat pump on the on the yurt and a few other cool things. There's more than enough solar to do the job. It's about a plus 8,000 watts. But, you know, right there will be the generator. But there'll be more stuff added, I would imagine, over time. Like, you know, crushed stone or whatnot. Biggest reason why I'm out here. But.
Yeah. And uh, one more thing too, when I brought this, I uh, kind of wish I had pictures or video of it. Well, I got some pictures, but uh, this whole thing was made on a trailer that had a uh, one of those monster dollies from Tractor Supply. And it was actually laying on its side and I rolled it off of the truck by myself and it was on its horizontal. And then I dug a hole for the wheels to go into and then I tipped it in with the jack and I pitched it up and got it onto the little concrete footer I made for it. So this whole box was built in my garage and I, and I hauled it up here about three hours north and installed it and literally had power to power my saws and everything I needed to build that. So this actually had power coming out of the, out of the gate and I was able to build that. And uh, yeah. So, well, now heading home, have to do it a little bit of work, but uh, some of y'all are probably wondering why did I also build that shed? Well, there's a little carve out in the NEC, in case you didn't know that if you build a purpose-built building, so if you have a structure, shed, that outhouse, really whatever, and the purpose of that building is for the sole purpose of housing the equipment. You don't need to do rapid shutdown or any of that kind of stuff. You just have to put standard disconnecting beams. And since that shed is within the site of the yurt and it's out in the middle of nowhere, that, ba that basically that breaker box is all that's required. Some might say you need to have a throw arm disconnect switch, and I'm not against it, but you know. But that's also the nice thing about the wiring systems. Simple as that. Without any rapid shutdown units or even optimizers, is this, you have very simple strings. It's extremely simple. You have things that are that simple. They tend not to give you shit. Hope you enjoyed that array for the what I've done. But I'm heading home for much needed rest.